Are you a conscious leader or a visionary or a thought leader in this world? And would you like to create some of your own content in collaboration with us? If so, please head over to theatlasofconsciousness.com to check out more of our video and production content. We would love to work with you to get more of these new earth messages out into the world. Thank you once again for listening. And now on to the episode. The feeling that I got from this place was the new world Mm. and what 2020 Mm. has felt like. For me personally, as soon as it ticked over, Mm. I felt the energy just shift. It's simply that you're getting ready for an expansion. This is the Atlas Emotion series, where we share edge of the earth ideas for a new world. Hi, welcome to another Atlas Emotion series podcast. My name is Ella and I'm here with the incredible Michael Muir. Thank you. Uh, We have a really interesting podcast today. It's going to be called 2020 New Light, New Energy, New Worlds. Beautiful. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for you to be here. I felt to reach out to you because Michael is a light language healer and very much a liver in the multiple worlds that we are now all inhabiting. I might just start the podcast by sharing how this podcast even came about. A couple of months ago, I went down the coast and I ended up at this really stunning location which had a huge ocean and just these trees that were so majestic. And the feeling that I got from this place was the new world, almost like the pioneers of the ancient worlds arriving at new continents. But the people that could feel that frequency, not as many. Yes. And the feeling I had was to create from that place basically and that's the act of creating media as they do now but also the new world tuning into that frequency Mm. and basically bringing that through in my everyday life Mm. i would on that note love to ask you can you introduce yourself and what is your relationship to the new world coming through so thanks for having me on the show ella you've inspired me in just what you've shared already in regards to the connection you felt with the trees connection you felt with the earth i feel like that we're in this rapid acceleration at the moment into this 2020 energy and i myself also went to wa really connected with the trees there the energy of the land the oceans during the bushfire season in australia and really connected with the deeper connection with mother earth her purging process her clearing process and the need for us to come online so it's i've really really honored to be as part of this show to support people activating to support people really awakening to to their multi-dimensional nature and their connection from all times and it feels like the earth is really asking us to step up now and i think probably the viewers of this show are the first wave and we're the ones that sort of have been triggered now to start changing our energy start embodying our frequencies in a different way so that we can support a bigger unfoldment and change in the planet So can you tell me, how do you support this process? How do I support this process? Personally, I work on myself, my own personal energy. Um, I'm a light language channel. So that means bringing through cosmic frequencies from different realms. So I bring through energies through my channel. I ground them into the earth individually. I also do this in groups and privately, opening people up to their multidimensional aspects, their cosmic connections to the energies that are wanting to be birthed and anchored in so i feel on an individual basis i'm clearing and working on my own channel constantly through connecting up and also grounding in which i think both are as important as each other at this point can you maybe give us a little bit of your journey here how did you become a light language healer i'm from a science background originally and i chose to do some personal development workshops which included the body as a tool for self-transformation. This is about 97, 98. And that led me into wanting to work with the the body-mind connection, knowing that we're a holistic organism. So really connecting with the body-mind as a one system and really the importance of the unification of both. 
So in that process, I decided to study somatic psychotherapy. So somatic psychotherapy is a body inclusive approach to therapy. So working as a traditional therapist, but also including the bodily experience, whether hands on energetic work or um, uh, talking about your feelings and your process uh, from sitting in the chairs in the therapeutic frame. And during the process of learning how to touch with compassion, this sound came through as I was working hands-on with people during the training. I didn't really know what it was. Nobody had talked about light language back in 2004. No one, it wasn't was, a cool thing. Yeah, yeah, it was sort of like I didn't have a clue what it was. And I thought, my God, this is a bit crazy. And I don't think I was grounded enough to start working with it, you know. So I decided to just put it to the side. I could do it, but I didn't know what it was for. And then later, around the 2012 mark, when, you know, the energy shifted of the planet, there was a lot of uh, new frequency coming in, awakening. I was called to start working with it. I found a couple of people that worked with it, um, who'd been working for it, with it for a while, just through social media, and started doing a little bit of work with them. Gave me some confidence, and then I started trying to work with it in individual groups and also one-on-one -on -one sessions. It just really spawned. I started channeling different frequencies, different ascended master energies. My channel became clearer through practice and just really doing the work. So can you tell me what is it like as a human being starting to channel and basically experience something so brand new back then when it was foreign to you and you didn't have many references of others doing it? Sure. I think that things have changed. You know, now I think people are a lot more open. The spiritual community is growing and growing and people are awakening. And so I think there's more of a platform now for that. I did feel very alone, you know, and there, and there was no reference point. So I thought, well, I'm just not going to use it. So I put it on hold. And then there came a point where I started doing meditations through a group of people called Children of the Sun in the US. And it opened me up to different realms. And I could feel the energies more strongly. And I come from a science background, you know, so I like to do my research. So once I started to access these realms, I needed to start working with people privately, in the privacy of this room, really, uh, with energetically sensitive people and practice. So that would be my, my advice, I guess, if I was going to give advice, if you're opening to a new soul gift or a spiritual awakening, find a safe place to practice. So I found people that I knew that were aware, energetically sensitive, open to light language. And so practice with them till I built confidence and reassurance in myself that this work was important and that it was useful for people. But that took a little while, you know. That's really cool. I think I was just pondering that there's this analogy there mm. between you receiving literally a new language mm. and that new energy and mm. all of us receiving mm. this new language, this new energy of the new world. Yes. And I felt to tie it back into mm. 2020 mm. and what 2020 mm. has felt like for both of us. I mean, for me personally, as soon as it ticked over, mm. I felt the energy just shift mm. and totally so much lighter, mm. so much just easier and I just remember being so weighed down last mm. year and feeling like things were so hard and then now there's just almost this like bedrock of gentleness and um and things are all okay because it's 2020 that's how it sort of always feels now I think this is a really important point because everybody's on their own journey and experiences the energies in different ways I personally found that a similar feeling an upliftment as we ticked over and into the beginning of January. And then since then, I've actually been clearing and processing some old energies in my vessel because I did a lot of work at the beginning of the year for the 12th of the 1st, the 12th of January, the Saturn-Pluto conjunct, which was a very big opening and a big activation in Uluru, Australia. So I did a lot of energetic work for that time which resulted in a purge out, if you will, of my channel. So I've been clearing a lot of old emotions from the lower three chakras in the last maybe month or so. So it's felt a little bit darker and heavier. But that's not to say globally it's darker and heavier. It's just that as this frequency comes in for 2020, it's going to potentially also, in the listeners even, agitate some old stuff for processing out. And this isn't that you're going backwards or that you're not in the energy of 2020. It's simply that you're getting ready for an expansion. Can you tell us a little bit about your work with Uluru ah. and perhaps some of your broader work with big groups? You work with huge 
numbers now. You do work with thousands of people. I do work, like, not not together, but definitely different yeah. groups. I've just started towards the end of last year working interstate along the East Coast. So I do groups in Melbourne and, and Brisbane now as well as Sydney mm. and some sort of regional places too. So my groups range anything from eight people in my therapy room to 60, 70 people in a bigger venue. And I feel that the group work is really important, you know, because in these groups, I feel every time I put it out there on social media to create a group, I feel that the exact right people are drawn to it. And each group I feel has a sole purpose. Within that group, we are clearing for our soul pod. That particular group is clearing and doing a piece of work together. And at the same time, in parallel, we are actually being of divine service and planetary service work. So the impact of the group is not solely just the people in the room and their own personal ascension evolution. This is actually also then been anchored into the earth grid at that point mainly Sydney, but also elsewhere on the East. And that is then allowing a shift in consciousness for the planet. I started very humble and very low key, very quietly doing my work. And then as I've gone along, little pieces have dropped yeah. in, you know? And, and it, it's now, since the 2020 energies have come in, that it really feels like it's important for us to help the earth. Yeah. You know, we're at this point where we have to change things. So. Thank you for inviting me to be part of that change. Oh, yeah. I love it. Um, okay, yeah, Uluru. Uluru. And so, how does that tie in maybe yeah, to what you so, just said? So basically Uluru was a real activation point for me. During the 12th of January this year, there was a prominent alignment that was very powerful, that it was written about in ancient texts that it would activate at Uluru, a sol the solar plexus, the chakra of Mother Earth, would activate fully at that time. So at that time, my sense was that there were star beings, if you will, Palladians, other star nations also supporting this anchoring of new light. And at this point, at that date, there was an anchoring of light down into that point, And then it went through Mother Earth's ley lines, uh, specifically the feminine ley line. And just describe those two, what ley lines are. Ley lines, sort of like energetic grid lines that go through the earth. So this particular line is called the Rainbow Serpent. And it goes Uluru to Glastonbury, the Heart Chakra, then Lake Titicaca. Yeah. And so this energy was pumped through that grid line. It was a completion of a process that never got completed many years ago. And this has allowed for this anchoring of this power center into the earth. So it's been amplified. So I think this is why as, as beings that are connected to the earth so strongly and awakening at this time, we're feeling more um, power to support her, more acceleration in our own physical bodies. Because if we relate our chakra system to the earth chakra system, as, as the earth chakra system is activated and cleared, we are also activated and cleared. So we've been asked to step it up with her to, to support the unfoldment. Because really we're like these little conduits of light dancing around the planet. And as we do that, um, we're anchoring light and supporting the shift in the planetary consciousness. What came to me just now was how interesting is it then that simultaneous, and I know this just from the Facebook connections and community that mm -hmm. Simultaneous to this huge Uluru awakening, so many people were drawn there to yeah. support that process, yeah. was simultaneously happening the worst um, case of our bushfire yes. season. Yes. There was not one untouched soul. Isn't that such a paradox? Can you talk to us about the coming of, of such huge light in Uluru and people feeling that, you know, but also there's so much of the population, including everyone, um, experiencing smoke and the hazard of bushfires. Yes. yes. Many different channels spoke in different ways around this experience. So I'm simply going to speak from what I believe, but obviously tune into your own wisdom, to your own knowing around this particular, I guess, time. But for me, I felt that this was almost like a, a purge out of, of karmic uh, distortions that had to happen on the on in Australia. It's almost like because most of the fires happened before the twelve one. Yeah, it was that sort of uh, Christmas time up till the twelve one, and then about a week after the rains came, and it and it was whoosh, shifted. Yeah, so I feel like it was a preparation 
it partly I feel like the land was preparing, it was clearing. It was getting rid of, of, of the heaviness and the density. It also activated the heart of Australia people and also brought the whole world focus onto Australia. You know, there was such an outpouring of heart. It was, it was beautiful, you know. It was, uh, and it, it connected us in so deeply, yeah. And I think that paved the way for us to be so open and ready to receive at this, at this pivotal moment on a global scale. This is a really interesting idea to me too. This this idea that what it sort of marked Australia as was a global leader mm. um, in terms of how would we respond. Mm. And I think what it activated in me was mm. this real feeling of spiritual purpose that mm. where I am now and where I may move within Australia, mm. it's exactly where I'm meant to be. And it is where the global purpose of the new world may emerge from. But the feeling I've gotten in my own personal experience mm-hmm. is this dualness, yeah, of, of facing those, those really barren hardships that come with the environment, but also truly experiencing like magical frequencies, like new world frequency. What's your relationship to Australia being potentially a, a global spiritual leader off the back of what we've gone through? I feel like this opening on the 12-1, it's like we're seeding of the new beginning. I feel the energy of this land is very ancient. You know, it's more pure than many other lands because of the space that has been held by the indigenous, especially Uluru. So I feel that it has been less tampered with through the timelines. So it holds ancient wisdom that is being unearthed at this time. And I think the people here have access to that and a purity within them that we will take out to the world and share. When I, you know, went down the coast, what I felt was um, it wasn't just like, it was actually stunning, you know, like it wasn't just that I was looking out at this almost like feeling of the being the pioneers, like of a completely new planet or, you know, as those would have felt of a new continent. It was this feeling that, you know, I went on this run and I was drawn to this old, tree and I picked up this piece of bark and I thought of you and actually I'm just realizing that connection right now (laughs) I thought of you and because it had all these tracings on it Mm. and it was almost like the tree was giving me a gift but I felt that it was the energy of ancient wisdom rising being someone in media it was also this feeling I had that the technology we have would come down and they would meet each other so it's so much about this world being environmentally integrated these spaces down the coast are so untouched there's Mm. hardly anyone there Mm. and the feeling you get is this epic majesty of how stunning almost shockingly stunning nature is and almost overwhelmingly beautiful like that you can't take it in as a human the energy is so huge this ancient wisdom rising but it's coming to meet us with our technology and create a new version of our planet integrated with nature it's interesting you talked about the trees i feel like they hold the there was a lot of grief in the trees obviously because of the fires but they also hold the wisdom of interconnectedness so it's interesting that feeling of our interconnectedness would come up when you had we're touching the bark so thank you for sharing that and also i feel this is the place that we're remodeling right now on in the new earth it's like in the times of atlantis if you will you know technology was misused and there was the fall and i think we still hold some of that energy within our i guess our dna and our past life just energetic distortions if you will and i feel like we're dissolving some of these old patterns within our energy bodies at this time as a collective so that we can move away from this armageddon prophecy of repeating a dark pathway and in that we are merging heaven on earth And we are merging the use of technology for good with nature. So two things. Mm. First thing, the feeling I had with these trees was huge as well. Mm. These Mm. trees were so big. It almost felt like I got dwarfed under how huge they were. They're Mm. they're like antennas, right? Beautiful. Yeah. And and I guess in these really natural environments, Mm. they're just pure (laughs) <laughs> high frequency it's yes. unreal it is like living in some sort of cosmic dream and that's what i yeah. think we've been called to do is to to reconnect more deeply with gaia's frequency yeah. and what she holds so that we can help her transform 
So a lot of the work that you do is actually uniquely for me, you're the only practitioner I've come across that really talks about Atlantis and Mm -hmm. Lemuria. So the production company I have is called the Atlas of Consciousness. Mm -hmm. When I was experiencing and being led by your work, I had a look at Mm -hmm. Atlantis and Lemuria and Mm -hmm. I went, oh my God, Mm -hmm. it's almost like the Atlas is rebirthing these civilizations in some way. Which is, which is incredible and unreal that I guess when we think of these civilizations, we think of something surreal, like a fantasy kind of world. Um, and I'm not sure that people even believe that they ever happened. What's your take on, I guess, that belief? I mean, I was never somebody that would have thought of that kind of esoteric work or believing in it. And it's only through, I guess, my own personal experiencing of shifting energy in my physical and people in group that I've started to come to believe that these places have existed in the past on this planet before us. And that is my sense psychically. This is my sense that we hold within our light body, our energy body, not so much the physical, but the energy within the soul, the energy within the physical chakra system, that we hold frequencies, we hold elements from those civilizations that we come in with to the planet, yes? We come in with these energies. We're trying to work out how to be with them in a different way, create a different world this time. If this world is just a grand experiment, if you will, yeah? If this world is a grand experiment to see if we can actually make it work and create something beautiful and not go down a negative path, which I feel that is is the potential this time around, then we have the opportunity to address the sins of the past, to heal the wounds of the past. Many of us hold those templates of destruction, and that's why when we see the coronavirus, when we see the bushfires, we, we can go into a bit of trauma and hopelessness around the end of the world. But that is, that is maybe some of that is past life trauma triggers. So we're, we're wanting to step out and step out and up into the 2020 frequencies and hold space for the collective when they get triggered by these sort of energies of Armageddon prophecies within their own energy bodies from past times of Atlantis Lemuria so that we can recreate those frequencies of purity from those times, bring back the wisdom from those times through our portals of light. It's like birthing the new Atlantis, birthing the new Lemuria here now in this frame bringing all those energies back into balance and and being it, yeah. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was what do we have to learn from Atlantis and Lemuria and specifically in relationship to technology and perhaps what didn't work back then? The theme of Atlantis particularly is around that there was a misuse of the crystal technology for purposes of power and self-interest, yeah. So I guess what we're seeing, the potential replay in, in this timeline is that, you know, uh, people that are in power are of using it power for self-interest. You know, there's talk about 5G, there's talk about, you know, AI intelligence. All of that is a potential timeline that can lead to a negative outcome. But at the same time, there's this emergence of self-empowerment within the collective. There's this emergence of... Uh, wanting to get back to nature, wanting to get back to um, purity of earth and purity of heart. And I'm not saying let's do away with all technology because it's useful. It's just who has, I guess, the reins on the technology. And I think it's at this time Gaia is wanting to come back into alignment, that is become self-empowered, to connect in unity all over the world and support a shift. I guess what what's kind of interesting from or the lessons mm. of Atlantis and Lemuria yeah. is this um, idea of power. Mm. And I think it's been interesting because this has really come up for me. I actually have a podcast mm. episode coming up in the future that mm. I'm kind of learning lessons of now about mm. power mm. and the nature of our own inner power first. Mm. I look at what's happening, the coronavirus, and we've obviously just gone through a big thing with climate change mm. and that that's just ongoing. Yes. And I realized this idea of the virality of powerlessness. So, cause I was looking at the coronavirus and I was like, what is this here to teach us? Mm. And I thought about this whole idea of virus or virality mm. and what has gone viral in the past is the experience of 
being controlled, uh, the experience of powerlessness mm. and people sharing those ideas of mm. being powerless. But what's now emerging and being born is mm. is power, true inner power, mm. and that has a potential now to go viral. Mm. True power can go viral. So I feel in that respect, it's a little similar to what happened with the Australian bushfires, yeah? There was a sense that we could have gone into hopelessness and devastation, and yeah, there was grief at that time. But it also, and and there was some outplaying of um, what happened in the politics here. But also, I feel like it was a coming together. It was people stepping up. It was people unifying. It was people feeling empowered to support Australia. It was people saying, no, we need change, connecting back to the Indigenous ways. So in the, the middle of tragedy, really, it brought people together and brought hearts together all over the world. Yeah, that's incredible. So I'm going to do a bit of a quantum leap and take us to another planet. Out of, I guess, everyone I know, you're the one that is always working with other planets, even just being around you and being in the energy of what you channel through. You can just feel other planets. You can feel other solar systems. You can feel other worlds, other ways of being. And to me, I see in colors, so I, the colors and the vibes of those places. Can you maybe talk to us about the way you experience these other civilizations. So I guess we all do it in our own way. My awareness of connections to other systems, such as Pallades, such as Sirius, such as um, Arcturus, yeah. I feel that I get guided to bring through frequency. I don't get a sense of a visual. I get a knowing or a nudge that I'm to work with a certain energy. At the moment, it's very Palladian. Like the Palladians are really supporting this earth shift. They have been at the 12th one and they continue to really keep a very close eye on the energy of the planet to try and stabilize things. I get guidance as in knowing that they want to bring messages through, whether it's in English or whether it's in light language, to support the consciousness of the planet. Everyone is a star seed. Some people remember that they come from other planets. Some people don't. Some people only remember one past life when they've been in Pallades or at Sirius or whatever. My take on it is that if you're an old soul, which many of us are that are doing this work now, we have had parallel lives on different planets. And as we open up our awareness, our, our, our light body, our energy body to to the multi-dimensional aspect of who we are that is a soul split into different places we can then call like an antenna of the tree we can go up and we can call on these different frequencies of our aspect in a different uh, dimension or in a, on a different planet so if you think about avatar the movie there was the the blue being on on the planet and then there was um, the guy in a scientific lab, yeah? So I feel like we've got this body here, but then we've got avatars in different places. And then as we are opened through our own soul awakening, we have the potential, and I feel like everyone has this potential if they keep doing the work, to access these different places within themselves and then bring in these frequencies and these energies to support the planetary a shift in consciousness really we're here to anchor our other home frequencies to here and make it our home does that make sense mm. so it's almost like bringing our uh, avatar consciousness to the planet and shifting the planetary grids by simply being it so when i when i tune into um those planets like say the pleiades um, what I feel is this like very soft, gentle white light, mm. um, very peaceful, I guess. When I tune into Sirius, what I see is blue and, is blue. and sort of almost like this, the blackness there, but, um, mm. but it's more like some sort of integrational feeling. This is how I feel them. And then, mm. and this feeling of almost they've integrated ancient wisdom and they live with it. Well, you know, Sirius was very much around the wisdom schools in Egypt, yeah? So that Sirius is, is very much around the ancient wisdom. And so that makes sense. And it sounds like when you connect with it, you're also potentially integrating something within your own matrix. Mm. And then I guess the Arcturians to me feel very clear 
and rational in some way. And the Acturian yeah. frequency is very much around technology mm -hmm. and very much around bringing in their wisdom. So, I mean, you, you sense it very with color. I sense it more with, with what they have to offer us. So the Palladians, very peaceful. Yeah, they're, they're wanting to emit peace to support this in this very sometimes chaotic world. And so they're very heart-centered. They work with the heart chakra and they're, they're, they're called the heart-centered healers. Many, I guess, spiritual people on the path that connect with Palladian energy are very heart-centered beings that are here to support healing of the heart, collective heart. Syrian, I feel more wisdom and Acturius, technological advancement. Yeah, so these beings are around bringing in frequency to to shift our physical, the way we actually embody in the physical, and our brain. I feel like they, they're really wanting us to awaken to, I guess, new realms, or to open up the pineal more, or to shift your brain consciousness to, to be more accepting and, and aware of a multidimensional self. You call them in. How do you feel their planets? Or do you, do you get images of their planets? I don't sort of get an image of a planet as such I get more a knowing or a feeling of their frequency mm. a sense of their beingness through my energy and then sometimes I'll channel some words in English if they have something to say in English or I'll channel a piece in light language that really is an activation of their consciousness to support an activation of your consciousness and an alignment with them so how do we do this how do we bring in these these frequencies, we would call them alien, but extraterrestrial frequencies of other planets, other star mm. systems that are operating at a higher consciousness than us. Mm. How do we bring those in to a planet that's experienced so much devastation and, and heartache um, at the same time as bringing up ancient wisdom? <laughs> it seems like a really big task to integrate such a huge scope of energy which is how it's felt for me yes, on my yes, journey it's yes. felt like there's been these really f incredible fantastic like mm. beyond like yeah, kind of yeah, yeah yeah beyond imaginable experiences and such dark heavy things mm. and bringing those together in a livable mm. like practical live we were talking about this before the mm. how do people practically live and bring it through and i think that's really important you know because if we're going to work with shifting the planet, we have to be accessible to, to regular people, you know. We have to talk in a way that is not too jargon so that we can actually bring through this energy and shift people, yeah. We can simply be it. And I think it's an important point you make around, I'll sort of talk about it in relation to the chakra system, yeah. So we've got the higher chakras sort of above the head, the astral chakras. I feel like that's that's chakras 8 to 12. These chakras are the portals to different dimensions, higher dimensional experiences, and these are where the energies come through, yeah? Then we have the crown, the access point, yeah? So when we open the crown and the pineal, we then have access to these higher dimensional frequencies. At the same time, if we're not grounded in the lower three chakras, uh, base chakra, uh, sacral chakra, and solar plexus chakra, that is the experience of us in the 3D. That is the experience of us as a physical body. What we're needing to do is integrate the whole system. We can live up here and have blissful experiences, but if we also have to anchor into the earth and help her at the same time. So it's anchoring through the higher frequencies and then integrating into the lower frequencies energy centers and in the processing of these higher frequencies through our channels inadvertently this is when the darkness comes yeah because as we process these higher frequencies through our channel we're then forced to um, clear the lower chakras because this higher light starts to agitate the lower three chakras and in the lower three chakras are the wounds the wounds of our childhood our past lives, the wounds of the earth. So we're then asked to, to dig deep, really, to dig deep in our own personal work and clear these frequencies within the lower three chakras so that we can actually hold more light of the earth, be anchored, be grounded, and also reaching for the stars at the same time. And I think that's what we're doing. I think that's what we're all in the process of doing, is getting stronger and getting clearer. 
And how do you support people in their daily process of this? So everyone's journey is personal to them. Everyone's history is personal to them. Everyone's energy and what they hold and their mission is personal to them. So it's a very individual process. I work with, somatically I work with, if there's distress, I work with processing of the emotions that are coming up for people. I work with clearing old energies from the chakra system. I work with harmonizing the nervous system if there's anxiety or distress or the frequency is too high and they need to support themselves. So I work with stabilizing the energy in the physical body. And then I also work with the psychology. So I work with old trauma, what needs to be resolved within the psychology of the person so that they can move through into a more expansive place. So it's sort of like using every tool I have in a very intuitive process to support them releasing their limiting beliefs, uh, integrating their, their childhood trauma or their past life trauma, and uh, bringing their body and their chakra system back into the best alignment for them in the moment. Yeah, And it's always an ongoing process. I was just thinking, is there anything else that comes to you mm. um, that you'd love to share? Let's just bring it back to the land of 3D. What does 2020 look like, feel like for you? Well, I've sort of really gung-ho to get going. <laughs> and then the last sort of month, I've been very much clearing density from the lower chakras. And, you know, sometimes it gets a bit heavy and a bit hectic. And I feel a bit like, oh, my goodness, this is all really hard. And I think that's really, I want to admit that on, on camera, because sometimes it's tough going, you know, as we move into a, a new octave of light, as a collective, we go through this clearing. And I think to have faith and hope, reach out for support, whether it's me, whether it's a podcast, whatever you personally use to support your own process, because it sometimes does get a bit heavy going when we're lifting our light to another level. So just know that, that if you are personally going through a process at the moment, it's okay, you will get through this, and then you will move into a new expanded place, new information will come through, and you will feel lighter, and, and you will get on with the journey. I feel like we're living in very accelerated times, so I feel like, for me, I've been getting the guidance that March is when there's going to be the turning point, and we really get going. It feels like these first two months, January, February, have been kind of a, a physical readjustment to the light in some ways, clearing energies and and then we're going to boom. We're going to move into a new phase and new things are coming in. So I feel like to tell people just hold faith, watch this space and honor their own ascension process really. And what about 2020 for you? What's on? 2020. Oh, cool. I'm continuing to work interstate. I'm really enjoying working with groups in different states in Australia. I feel that my work will move to do something in the US, not straight away. I just really feel to do it when it feels right timing, but I feel like I want to support the energy of the US and the grids and the frequencies there. So I feel that something will come up in the second part of the year to go to US, but I'm going to continue with my group work. I feel that that is where I can do most uh, acts of service on a, on a bigger scale. I've got a co couple of conferences I'll be doing this year in Australia and continuing with my one-to-one -one work, both online and in person in Sydney. I love your Facebook posts. Oh, thank you. Both funny and incredibly deep and informative. You're a little bit of a psychic, for lack of a better phrase. You can foretell energies that are coming forward. What can you feel or see for the next decade ahead, 2020 to 2030? Personally, I feel like we're just going to gradually step it up. I feel that there's a lot of work to be done. I've been getting guided that this lifetime is a transitional lifetime for the planet. I feel like we've come knowing that it's not easy. It's not an easy time on the earth. There's lots to, to shift through and, and to work towards. It's exciting though. We're connecting back to our histories and our, our ancient wisdom and intelligence at this time as beings, as spiritual beings of light. But also that means that there has to be a dismantling of the old way. And so I see over time dismantling of the new way, like whether it's the way the political parties go or the way the financial systems are, are run. But I feel like we are guided really by the other realms also, that there's lots of beings supporting us 
from afar, and that dismantling of, of structures will come at a rate that is manageable for the collective. I don't feel that they will put us in dire straits. I don't feel that there's going to be really, you know, shocking collapses. I feel like it's an ongoing dismantling that we psychologically can manage as a collective. I mean, I'm not saying it's all going to be smooth sailing, but I think it's this gradual erosion of the systems that don't work and the gradual upliftment and the um, empowerment and the sovereignty of the collective. Yeah, incredible. I, I was just going to say for me, 2020 is probably just putting out more and more media from that higher frequency. I think I'm excited because I feel drawn to making bigger things, making TV shows, um, working with bigger organizations and bringing these ideas, yeah, bringing these ideas to more people. And that's how it feels as I feel the deepening of, I guess, the creativity and the intuition into that ancient wisdom. There's mm. sort of this also a broader spread of the people that I can connect with through the media. So it's, it's pretty exciting in that way. And I really feel this is such a valuable tool to get the work out there. So I really honor you for who you are becoming and what you are doing to support the collective at this time and the planet. And you too, you helped me get here yeah. a few years ago. I was getting a session from, from you and feeling like a pile of poo. <laughs> <laughs> As we do. <laughs> uh, I was really in a crap place, just to put it lightly. And I was in a parking lot for some visual context. And oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah, and I was just in my car because it was like sort of my only place that I could go. And then you're like, oh, don't worry, darling. You're you're just bringing through the blueprint for the new world. You'll be fine. <laughs> But um, you were right. It's only allowed for a more and more heaven-like experience in my life. We can have big roles in the world and they can, at the same time, paradoxically, it can be so simple, you know. So don't be afraid of who you are. Don't be afraid of what you're here to do. Just let yourself expand day by day into your role and get the support you need, meet like-minded people and have fun. You know, that's a really beautiful way of putting it. Um, and I guess like maybe just the last point on. Sure. So we are facing things uh, right mm. now, like the coronavirus, like yes. like yes. climate change. Yes. Um, and we were talking about power mm. uh, a little bit back. Mm. Uh, how can we really live and own our power in relationship to these things that almost feel overwhelmingly mm. bigger than us or they disturb us or frighten us? So, you know, I, if I feel disturbed or frightened by something, I go in to look at what is that for me. I try and work with the energy of the fear. I try and support my nervous system. So that could mean connecting with the trees, you know. That could mean walking along the beach, being in nature. Let Gaia hold you through the fear, yeah, if you're feeling triggered by something that's going on externally. Also, if you're feeling overstimulated by some one of these things that's going on, you know, turn off the TV, cut down the news for a little while and just reharmonize and restabilize. I feel like at this time we're really being called to be conduits of balance and peace. So we have to just keep working on our own inner harmony. And not to say you aren't touched by the world or the experiences that are going on in the world, but also self-care self-care in your response and get extra support if you need it and come back into balance come back into your power your solar plexus center if you're feeling a bit fearful and then from that place tune in from a calm place and say well what does the divine wish for me to do about this and maybe you just have to be that agent of peace in that moment maybe there's nothing to do but just stay in your happy zone maybe you are guided to go and do something some activist work, some connecting grids, connecting people, healing, whatever. But, you know, tune in to what your soul is asking for you. So just recently what came to me was this is what I'm here to do is mm. is to share how it is in harmonizing ourself mm. that we bring forward a vision for a new world. Mm. So our sort of big job mm. for, for 2020 and what's to come and the big energies of mm. everything we've talked about today the alien civilizations the ancient civilizations mm. our big job is to just 
tune in and harmonize ourselves and naturally what will come through us are those remarkable new frequencies um, of 2020 and, and a higher light, a new world. Yeah. Beautiful. And I think as we, as we learn how to perceive these frequencies, sometimes they'll just be downloads of energy and you'll just feel it as energy. But sometimes as you get downloaded with energies, there will be new thoughts come in. There'll be new awarenesses guidance just innately comes into your into your awareness and that is when you know what to do next sometimes it's simply about sitting in the void of not knowing for a while and then something inspirational will just pop in yeah very cool so any any last words do we want to do a little bit of light language (laughs) i think that's it thank you for coming thank you for inviting me maybe lead us from here what are you what's happening right now so really i feel like that you know i talked earlier about the palladians yeah so i think they just want to come through in light language form and this is really for our heart chakra I feel like many people are opening the heart to a deeper level right now. So that can also bring up some old, old fear, old wounding, old, old, not good enough stuff, whatever your themes are. So really, I feel like it's just a, a, an invitation to sit in our hearts and absorb this frequency of love. I was just going to ask, can you mm. describe to us before we dive into light language a little bit of what it is, what it is, and verse because sometimes you talk about how the mind might such and such, yes. um, maybe talking about yeah, what is light language? So light language is simply a series of sounds that don't make sense to the auditory ear. If you've had a religious upbringing or if you've ever heard of someone talking in tongues, it's it's similar to that in a context of it sounds like gibberish to the human ear, uh, like a foreign language, but not a foreign language. And it really, all you have to do when you hear it is let your energy, let your, like, let your small mind, let your conscious mind not, don't try and interpret it, but just let your energy and your body and your, and your wisdom of your soul listen to it and get what you get. It may be nothing. It may be a tingle in the heart. It may be a warm in the heart. It may be uh, some sort of energy shift in your auric field. People experience it differently. You get what you need, really, as an individual. And it's like an activation of your knowing, an activation of your DNA. Yeah. Hmm. So should we do a bit? Yeah. So if you're, if you're listening at home, you can put your uh, hand on your heart. You can keep your eyes open if you want or closed. It's up to you. You can watch me if you want. Sometimes it's it's good to watch the energy come through my body. And you, this is simply an act of love, really. A blessing for us on our journey from the Palladians. Knowing that we are never alone. Do you get a healing as well as, as it's coming through? I don't feel it as much. I feel it in a different way. Mm. If I listen to a replay, I feel it mm, differently. But as I'm being it, you don't feel it in the same way as someone listening to it. But, but it is shifting my energy. So, yes, it's healing me too. Because I, I, felt, I felt like I've had this lower back pain. So it's mm. all about support and where I've come from. And, mm. and I felt like the Palladians were like clearing that. Helping to support, clear that, that was the gift. Yeah, yeah. So that's perfect, you know, an expression of, you know, getting what you need. It worked, the energy working on exactly on your energy body of, as what you need for the moment. So I'd be interested if anyone wants to put feedback on the podcast to what they experience. I'll check it out sometime. Sounds good. I guess my personal thing is so like, I've I've recently started music and singing and mm. that's my own I feel like that's my own healing for myself just mm. bringing through mm. um my natural frequency and my natural mm. excitement and so I would also just add that that whatever feels like the most exciting thing for you is 
not just the energy of the new worlds, but literally the most healing thing I think you can do. If it's powerful and passionate to your soul, it's going to open you up. So just go with your vibe. Go with your vibe. That's um, <laughs> that's like the take the one takeaway for for 2020. Go with your vibe. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for listening, everyone. I'll put all the links um below for Michael's work, thank you. and um, feel free to reach out for to him and and watch out for his events um, if you're in Australia and also online work if sure. you're overseas. And also, I do often the workshops I do in Sydney, especially, I will uh, open them up so people can witness them online uh, in a private Facebook group. So even if you're not here in, in Australia, you can still attend the workshop online, live. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you.